I often get asked, how is our cancer approach and treatment different? So I'm going to go over a really nice, simple overview so you can understand how it's different compared to the conventional and even different compared to the alternative or integrative standard types of care. And I'm going to try to do it as quick as I can, so follow with me. But it's good to know that what we're doing is being researched really around the world and it's being done by some of the most prestigious cancer groups in the world. It's just not being offered on patients inside the United States in an organized format. So let me show you here. The first thing I want to bring to attention is these, these points, these simple points here. Gene profiling, circulating tumor cells, fractionation, immunotherapy, and phytotherapeutics. This is really, every one of these is how we're very different than the conventional. The first part is genetics and biomarkers, okay? When conventional doctors or oncologists, at, at, you know, here in 2015, uh, look for treatments for their patients, they're using standard protocols developed by the pharmaceutical companies based on a tissue biopsy, which is really old school. Uh, we've been using gene mutation information. Really think about it. What causes cancer? It's the gene mutations. That's what's causing the cancer. So if you don't treat the gene mutation and you don't find the treatment based on that, you're not going to get as a good as targeted treatment. The other thing is the biomarkers. There are a number of markers on cancer cells that you can treat if you know what they are. And so it really is not about what type of cancer you have, lung, colon, breast. It's more about what the genetic mutations are and what are the biomarkers, molecular profiles. And, and this is important and, it's, and it should be from the original tumor biopsy, but we need to go a step further. We need to look at circulating tumor cells. We use both national and international laboratories to gather the data. Circulating tumor cells, when patients have advanced cancers, those cancers have mutated, they've spread throughout the body. So if those cancers have spread, the patient then needs to have a treatment that is based on the new genetic cancer information because it's mutating and changing all the time. So circulating tumor cells allow us to look at what's happening in the here and now. And that changes everything because now we can see what the cancer may respond to best right in the here and now. This leads to the next component. Once you find the right targets and you find the right therapies are gonna help the patient, we give them in low doses. And we use special techniques to deliver those low doses to the target cancer cells, trying not to harm the body. Now, when you use the low dose method or fractionation, it allows you to use more mechanisms. In the conventional model, you can only usually pick one, two, top, you know, three agents, usually it's two, because it's too toxic for the body. And if they don't work, the chances of responding to a next regimen is like you have a 98% chance you won't respond to another regimen because you were refractory to that therapy. You didn't respond. When you have this genetic information and you have these circulating tumor information, and then you can now give multiple different approaches at one time, you increase the chance of treating that and not being as toxic to the patient and rebuilding the patient's health. The next part is immunotherapy which is very exciting. And of course, there are different versions of immunotherapy. We have our own cancer vaccine we built in, um, in, in, in our center in Mexico, which is built from the natural killer cells of the patient, grown into the billions and typed against the cancer. But immunotherapy is also developing in the United States. And so the combination of smart drug approaches with rebuilding the immune system to attack cancer is very important. And we think it's definitely the way forward. And if so do the researchers and so do a number of the hospitals. The problem is when you enroll in a clinical trial in the US, you're only doing one thing like immunotherapy. You're not using all of these technologies at one time. And, and most people use standard protocols before they have access to this. And finally, phytotherapeutics, which I think is very exciting. In those same genetic tests, molecular profiles, circulating tumor cells, all that information we're gathering that's making what we do different, we're looking at even the mechanism of action of plants and nutrients and how they're going to respond to the patient. So most integrative centers, if they want to use that word or alternative facilities, are going to give patients vitamin C, maybe intravenously, some herbs, vitamins. We type it directly to the, to the molecular profiles and targets. So we're using the mechanism of action, if you will, how those plants work. Because if you think about it, a number of drugs were developed from plants. You look at the vinca and you look at the alkaloid-based uh, chemotherapeutics, they're based on plant-based uh, therapeutics. So we can look at a plant 
We can look at the mechanism of action, the active ingredient in that plant, and then we can add that also as another target. So this just increases our tool belt enormously. And usually most plants are much, much less toxic than, than, than so to speak, uh, synthesized drugs. But you can use this, this intelligent hybrid. And that's what makes what we do very unique here at, at Invita. And it's great to see now this coming out more in the literature. But we've been doing this kind of work for a while and getting better at it. And this is where the targeting comes in. It's not uncommon. We see it almost every day where a patient comes to us. And we're able to show them this is why what you've done doesn't work. This is all that, and, and these are prestigious cancer centers. And here are the better targets. And we approach those. It is of our opinion that this is the way forward. Doctors know that. And a lot of times the argument you'll get from conventional physicians or oncologists is, well, where's the data? We're not ready yet. We don't want to give patients false hope. And we agree. We don't want to do that. But if we have better testing and better targeting and better technology, especially for, for patients who are more late stage or didn't respond to the standard protocols, which is, you know, quite a few patients if the disease isn't found early, we believe this method to be far superior, to provide quality of length, length of life, and better management in the overall cancer patient. So I just want to share that with you today. Um, it's important that we get educated and really understand what our options are. This is a true second opinion. You're going to get marketing that says, oh, we do alternative medicine. Oh, we offer supplements. Oh, we do genetic testing. That's not what I just said. Most genetic testing is at the first surface layer. What I showed you here, responding to the uh, circulating tumor cells and immunotherapy and the combinations of these with phytotherapeutics is at least seven to 10 years ahead of the curve of what we see in standard oncology. And that's why we feel we get better results and, and, and we have better options for our patients. So I thank you for joining me. I wish you the best of health. God bless you on your journey to healing. Um, we're here to help in any way we can. If you have any questions regarding cancer, treatment, options, and so forth, don't hesitate to contact us. Take care and God bless you.